Welcome to our books summary channel, Explore Books. Today, we will get a summary of another new book. Gandhi, an autobiography, the story of my experiments with truth written by Mahatma Gandhi in Gujarati, Satyan Aprayogath Vatmakatha, Lit.A is the autobiography of Mahatma Gandhi, covering his life from early childhood through to 1921. It was written in weekly installments and published in his journal Navjivan from 1925 to 1929. Its English translation also appeared in installments in his other journal Young India. It was initiated at the insistence of Swami Anand and other close co-workers of Gandhi who encouraged him to explain the background of his public campaigns. In 1998, the book was designated as one of the 100 best spiritual books of the 20th century by a committee of global spiritual and religious authorities. Starting with his birth and parentage, Gandhi has given reminiscences of childhood, child marriage, his relationship with his wife and parents, experiences at school, his study to London, efforts to be like the English gentleman, experiments in dietetics, he's going to South Africa, his experiences of color prejudice, his quest for dharma, social work in Africa, return to India, his slow and steady work for political awakening and social activities. The book ends abruptly after a discussion of the Nagpur session of the Indian National Congress in 1915. Mahadv Desai translated the book from Gujarati to English. In this preface, Desai notes that the book was originally published in two volumes, the first in 1927 and the second in 1929. He also mentions that the original was priced at one rupee and had a run of five editions by the time of the writing of his preface. 50,000 copies had been sold in Gujarati but since the English edition was expensive it prevented Indians from purchasing it. Desai notes the need to bring out a cheaper English version. He also mentions that the translation has been revised by an English scholar who did not want his name to be published. Chapters 2943 of Part 5 were translated by Desai's friend and colleague Pierre Neyer. Part 1 The first part narrates incidents of Gandhi's childhood, his experiments with eating meat, smoking, drinking, stealing and subsequent atonement. There are two texts that had a lasting influence on Gandhi, both of which he read in childhood. He records the profound impact of the play Harish Chandru and says, I read it with intense interest. Dot, 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 it haunted me and I must have acted Harish Chandra to myself times without number. Another text he mentions reading that deeply affected him was Shravana Pitrabhakti Nataka a play about Shravan's devotion to his parents. Gandhi got married at the age of 13. In his words, it is my painful duty to have to record here my marriage at the age of 13. I can see no moral argument in support of such a preposterously early marriage. Another important event documented in this part is the demise of Gandhi's father Karam Kand Gandhi. Gandhi wrote the book to deal with his experiment for truth. His disdain for physical training at school particularly gymnastics has also been written about in this part. Part 2 The second part of the book details Gandhi's experiences in the Cape Colony during a period of tension between the different ethnic groups in the region. The Cape Colony was dominated by British South Africans, while the neighboring Orange Free State and the Transvaal Republic were established by Boers white settlers of Dutch descent who had migrated away from the Cape Colony further north in the early 19th century and established the two independent republics. Gandhi detailed the antagonistic relationships between the two Africano republics and the Cape Colony along with his experiences of being racially discriminated against while in Africa. Indians had been migrating to South Africa for decades to work on coffee and sugar plantations and while they did not experience as much discrimination as the black population did, numerous discriminatory legislation had been put into place, 
effectively transforming Indian migrants into second-class citizens. Gandhi repeatedly experienced the sting of humiliation during his long African sojourn. The incident at Maritzburg, where Gandhi was thrown off the train has become justly famous. When Gandhi, as a matter of principle, refused to leave the first-class compartment, he was thrown off the train. Later, Gandhi also had difficulty being admitted to hotels and saw that his fellow Indians, who were mostly manual laborers, experienced even more unjust treatment. Very soon after his arrival, Gandhi's initial bafflement and indignation at discriminatory policies turned into a growing sense of outrage and propelled him into assuming a position as a public figure at the Assembly of Transvaal Indians where he delivered his first speech urging Indians not to accept inequality but instead to unite, work hard, learn English and observe clean living habits. Although Gandhi's legal work soon start to keep him busy, he found time to read some of Tolstoy's work, which greatly influenced his understanding of peace and justice and eventually inspired him to write to Tolstoy setting the beginning of a prolific correspondence. Both Tolstoy and Gandhi shared a philosophy of non-violence and Tolstoy's harsh critique of human society resonated with Gandhi's outrage at racism in South Africa. Both Tolstoy and Gandhi considered themselves followers of the Sermon on the Mount from the New Testament, in which Jesus Christ expressed the idea of complete self-denial for the sake of his fellow men. Gandhi also continued to seek moral guidance in the Bhagavad Gita, which inspired him to view his work not as self-denial at all, but as a higher form of self-fulfillment. Adopting a philosophy of selflessness even as a public man, Gandhi refused to accept any payment for his work on behalf of the Indian population preferring to support himself with his law practice alone. But Gandhi's personal quest to define his own philosophy with respect to religion did not rely solely on sacred texts. At the time, he also engaged in active correspondence with a highly educated and spiritual Jain from Bombay, his friend Rekandra, who was deeply religious, yet well versed in a number of topics from Hinduism to Christianity. The more Gandhi communicated with Ray Kandra, the more deeply he began to appreciate Hinduism as a non-violent faith and its related scriptures. Yet, such deep appreciation also gave birth to a desire to seek inner purity and illumination, without solely relying on external sources, or on the dogma within every faith. Thus, Although Gandhi sought God within his own tradition, he espoused the idea that other faiths remain worthy of study and contain their own truths. Not surprisingly, even after his work assignment concluded, Gandhi soon found a reason to remain in South Africa. This pivotal reason involved the Indian Franchise Bill, with which the natal legislature intended to deprive Indians of the right to vote. No opposition existed against this bill except among some of Gandhi's friends who asked him to stay in South Africa and work with them against this new injustice against Indians, who white South Africans disparagingly called coolies. He found that racist attitudes had become deeply entrenched, especially in the two Boer republics, where they lived in the worst urban slums and could not own property or manage agricultural land, even in natal where Indians had more influence, they were not allowed to go out after 9 p.m. without a pass, while in the Cape Colony, they were not allowed to walk on the sidewalk. The new bill which prohibited Indians from voting in natal only codified existing injustice in writing. Although a last-minute petition drive failed to the Indian Franchise Bill from passing, Gandhi remained active and organized a much larger petition which he sent to the Secretary of State for the Colonies in London, and distributed to the press in South Africa, Britain, and India. The petition raised awareness of the plight of Indians and generated discussions in all three continents to the point where both the Times of London and the Times of India published editorials in support of the Indian right to vote. Gandhi also formed a new political organization called the Natal Indian Congress 
a clear reference to the Indian National Congress, which held regular meetings and soon, after some struggles with financing, started its own library and debating society. They also issued two major pamphlets, an appeal to every Briton in South Africa, and the Indian franchisee an appeal, which argued in favor of eliminating discriminatory legislation targeting Indians. He was also thrown off of a train in South Africa when he didn't agree to move from his first class seat which he paid for, though, at first, Gandhi intended to remain in South Africa for a month, or a year at most. He ended up working in South Africa for about 20 years. After his initial assignment was over, he succeeded in growing his own practice to about 20 Indian merchants who contracted him to manage their affairs. This work allowed him to earn a living while also finding time to devote to his mission as a public figure. During his struggle against inequality and racial discrimination in South Africa, Gandhi became known among Indians all around the world as Mahatma, or Great Soul. Thank you for visiting our channel, Explore Books. We hope you found the summary informative and helpful. Please subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for more updates. Happy reading!